If you're gonna have a potato skin, I pretty much want a ratio of everything else on top of the skin. Cheese, sour cream, and bacon. And this is just leveling up a full-size wedge. It's delicious. And you kind of have the added benefit of like the potato being cooked in the bacon fat and the flavor from the bacon itself yeah. just goes all the way through. And so we kind of started off by like trying to pursue JoJo's and we've gotten to a pretty good spot with that. That recipe's to come, don't worry about that. But we were already having the slices. Grant had the idea, why don't we do a fully loaded one, wrap it up. We didn't quite know what he was talking about. It's almost a, it's almost a twice baked potato, but is, not yeah. quite mashed up, yeah. And it's a one cook too. Yeah, so I'll you don't have to cook it twice. Um, but yeah, is there anything we need to know going into this? Well, it's just super simple. All you need is a potato and some bacon and then whatever else you want to put on top of it. Yeah, so super simple, washed russet potato. Sure, you can use Yukon as well, but we like that classic russet potato for a Jojo potato wedge. So all we're gonna do is split this into eight equal pieces. Now your size might vary just a little bit depending on the potato that you're choosing. So cook time at the end, you might have to adjust just slightly. We do a little bit longer to get the bacon crispy and haven't had an issue with any of them being undercooked yet. But it's only 30 minutes and you can always test it by like fork tender, right? Right. So you can see eight even sliced Jojos. We're not even gonna go to the like seasoning or anything here. We've got enough salt coming from the, the bacon to be on there. But if you want any sort of spice blend, now would be the time to do it. We, we get some pretty big slab bacon too. So if at the store, yours is a little bit shorter, you always give this stuff a little tug. It's kind of elastic and easy to stretch out. If you need to go with two pieces, you can. We'll show you a little result of that later. We liked a single piece going on here because it gets a little bit more rendered and crispy. But if you want to double wrap it and get a little bit of that combination of chew and crunch, it works out well too. And we're not gonna try to get every little bit of this. Just wrapped around, it's enough bacon to potato ratio. We're just rolling it around and we don't need to like toothpick it and hold it in or anything. I was really surprised by that. I thought it would just like shrink all up and do it something. It kind of shrinks really. around itself, right? Yeah. Again, don't be afraid to like just kind of stretch it and make sure it has enough for wrapping around. It's not gonna break or fall apart. I don't know why, but this kind of reminds me of like a Seattle hot dog for some reason. Oh. Like you want like cream cheese on there. It almost is. You could probably do this with a hot dog. It'd be delicious. You know, we should have. We probably should have preheated this thing first. This guy. Rewind. Go back. So we're at 350 on air fry. We want to make sure it fully preheats so that we get all that heat transfer that we want to the bacon. 30 minute cook. 30 minute cook. So why are we doing like the dehydrate air fry rack? Well, for this, you're obviously gonna get a lot of rendered fat from the bacon, so you don't wanna have it on the rack because that'll just drip everywhere in there. But we did raise it up on a rack to get that airflow around the bottom. Haven't had any issues with it not getting crispy. It gets crispy all the way around. We put a little bit of parchment underneath just to help with cleanup. If you don't have it, not needed. It can be foil, it can be parchment, doesn't really matter. What rack do we want, Kyle? Uh, we are right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right on, on seven works great, yeah. On seven, going at the bottom. So why don't you put it in like the middle? We get some good airflow like this, but um, with this high of a temperature, we didn't want too much direct heat from the top element to burn the bacon. We want a nice even airflow and even right. heat to render all the way around. It takes a while to cook a potato. Yeah, because it what we don't want is for the the bacon to look like it's fully cooked or browning on the top, still be soggy on the bottom and then right. the potatoes not be cooked. So it's more of a just even consistent cooking for it. it. You can go thinner. If you go thinner, you're just gonna use more bacon. Uh, it's more bacon to potato ratio. If you like that, go for it. The potatoes aren't gonna overcook enough that you're just gonna be like falling apart. But if you go like quarter wedges, you're just gonna be too thick you won't be able to get the potato cooked and then the bacon's just gonna get blasted. Yeah, cause you're kind of going for like kind of crispy on the outside on the bacon, but still kind of like that chewy bacon, like beneath it next yeah. to the potato, like the best of both worlds in my opinion. Yeah, and the potatoes aren't cooked to like a mashed potato in there. They're like kind of confit with that fat. They're creamy, they, they have texture. They're not just gonna fall and break right apart. It's out of the oven, 21 seconds, looking gorgeous. Crispy, chewy. This is the thing too. If you if you want extra, extra crispy, just let it keep going. But this is where we like it. We like it a little crunch, a little chew. Potatoes are still, you can handle them and dip them if you wanted to. It's kind of more important that the potato is fully cooked, right? I mean, that's Correct. kind of the key here. Yeah, All right, it's 30 minutes. All right. 
crispy, sizzly. Pretty easy to test doneness on potatoes. Oh yeah, it's soft all the way through. Woo. Nice. Perfect. You can save that fat too, right? Yeah, I, I save my uh, bacon drippings. I save my bacon drippings. It's tongue tied, yeah. Top. It's a fat at home. Why not? So these are all done. We're gonna transfer them over onto what we would use as a serving tray. I still like using a little quarter sheet tray because I like to cheese it twice, put some cheese in there and get it back into the oven so that it melts a little bit and then top it at the end. So I don't want just like loose unmelted cheese. It's good, but I'd rather it be a little oozy. Nick found some craft singles in the fridge because you know we always keep those on hand. So we're gonna do some of those. Now, we didn't show it when we slid it in there, but we snuck in two of the double wraps. Bacon, double wrapped in bacon. So we'll show you a little bit of that. That's why they look a little thicker. Ooh, those are hot. We're gonna just garnish this up on here. I do like to get mine a little bit tighter. So we've got areas that like kind of hold it up instead of it just going all on the tray. All right, we're just giving these a few seconds here to get melty. You can do mess. some scallion prep. Ooh, yeah, scallion prep. I don't think we need all of these for one tray, but they sure look pretty. I like just the greens. Just the greens, why is that? Uh, for this one, it's a little bit more delicate. You know, you get down into the whites and it's more of a chunk of onion. Okay. So this will just kind of spread it out. You're done with the cheese, right? Oh, no, no, we're not done with the cheese. You're gonna do it again? Yeah, this is the pre-cheese. Oh, I wouldn't have put mine then. Oh, yeah, well, do you I, know what? Do I have to do more craft singles then? I said it. Do I well, I think we'll just put more on my cheese on your you. cheese. So, I don't know, mine here. look pretty good. We're looking a little melty here, which is great. Why don't you do like double cheese the first time? Because I don't want it all just melted on the bottom and greasy. Okay, all right. Do you want me to leave yours alone? You just want craft Some singles? Some cheese on one. Just, just one. Just all one, right. yeah. All right, now at this point, I'm gonna get a little, little saucy with the sour cream. And this is why I've got it in here. You can just kind of get it on there. You're not gonna be able to do that with a spoon. Wait, why do you put it in the oven with the sour cream? It's already done in the oven. Oh, I thought it's you were going in back the in the oven. I'm no, so that's confused. why it melted some of the beginning. Okay. It's just, all right. okay. just That got makes sense. I thought he was- Some of it like melty. It. I didn't want it all grated, all right. right? All right, here all you right. go. For me, I want a little bit of the Franks. Do you want it on yours or no? Oh yeah, dude. Okay. Take the cap off. Well, cool. <laughs> get a little crazy with it here. If you didn't know how to shoot Franks out like that, that's how you do it. You did it, Kyle. Yeah, I mean. Look at that. Are you gonna use your fingers? You want a fork? You got a fork? Oh, in your pocket. You don't keep a fork in your pocket? You gotta be prepared. Okay, your craft single one looks interesting to me. I'm kind of excited about it. Oop, you saw the cheese pull. Mm. It's probably still hot. Nope. Is it on my chin? It's on my chin. I think the cheese, the craft singles is way better. It's creamy, it's fluffy, the potato's perfectly cooked. The potato doesn't need to be seasoned because we added cheese on top, hot sauce, um, lots of other salty goodness from the bacon. So it's kind of calm feed. I think that was a good way to put it. I don't know if it's just me, but I think we need like way more hot sauce on there. Oh, you got a double. It's chewier. Chewier? With a double wrap one. Mm -hmm. So check these out. Kyle did an awesome job with these. And this is one of our many air fry recipes and there's many more. Give it a try.